Elon Musk just revealed SpaceX Starship's new grid fins update that changes everything. When other space companies were busy with updates to their fuel or the aerodynamic shape, Elon Musk was focused on the grid fins, something that will arguably be the defining factor when SpaceX is compared to other companies. It is indeed another masterclass by Elon Musk. Today we'll be talking about the brand new grid fins that Elon Musk has revealed for his aeronautical company, SpaceX. It might change everything there is regarding the flight control parts in the space industry. What are grid fins exactly? How will they change everything? Stick around to the end as we answer these questions and more as we delve into the life of Elon Musk and his company, SpaceX. Without further ado, let's begin the video. Before we understand how grid fins will be the game changer in the space industry, let us first understand what exactly is a grid fin and how they're made. The grid fins may appear to be a new innovation, but it's all thanks to Elon Musk. He and the SpaceX team were the ones who first proposed the idea, and they designed a way that used grid fins instead of the flaps that other firms used at the time. It was created as a result of this out-of-the-box thinking. Let's start with the brains behind the grid fins and what these fins are. Grid fins are a type of flight control surface found on bombs and rockets. A grid fin is a box that is made up of a lattice of smaller aerodynamic surfaces. Because of their unique design, they're frequently compared to waffle irons or potato mashers. In 2014, SpaceX used them for the first time on the Falcon 9 rocket. The grid fins were used for the first time in late 2015 to assist in the control and landing of a Falcon 9 rocket. This was a major accomplishment that boosted SpaceX's faith in the design. There are four massive grid fins at the very top. Musk, on the other hand, maintains that they have shrunk and that the grid fins are significantly better and lighter than previously. We don't need four, I think we could get by with two and certainly not three. They would be going to aspirationally two grid fins, but no more than three, with the third one being small, even with grid fins. This is obviously crucial. Remember Elon Musk's Tim Dodd tour from last year? Although the dry mass of Super Heavy is a shifting target, Musk stated that it should be under 200 tons. The engines weigh two tons, including mounting mass. The fuel tank and liquid oxygen tanks weigh roughly 80 tons, and the inner stage weighs around 20 tons, with four grid vents weighing about three tons. Musk claims that he intends to be able to have the size of each grid vent and that the current design is both mass and energy efficient. He went on to remark that everything, including the avionics grid millions in batteries, is currently too heavy. As a result, the SpaceX team is continuously attempting to make the rocket as light as possible in order to increase payload capacity and reduce propellant consumption, among other things. But why are grid fins being used instead of something more traditional like a stabilizer or a canard by SpaceX? Because Falcon 9 taught them how to use grid fins, Ellen simply stated. SpaceX has had significant success with the Falcon 9 design, launching seven Falcon 9 flights in less than a month, a feat that no other company has been able to achieve. As you transition from hypersonic to supersonic, transonic and subsonic speeds, grid fins are more consistent than flaps. As a result, you'll go through numerous marker regimes, with grid fins being significantly more consistent than wings. When you travel from supersonic to subsonic, the center of pressure on any flat surface changes substantially, especially as you get closer to subsonic. After all, finding out why our super heavy grid fins are so important will be fascinating. Elon Musk's grid fins have three key goals. The initial pitch is aerodynamic. Grid fins are used to control aerodynamic pitch on super heavy aircraft. As they fall back towards Earth, the grid fins might change their arrangement and roll. To accomplish this, SpaceX will need to deploy grid fins that can be controlled and adjusted while in flight. Because of SpaceX's landing design, little adjustments in the grid fins as the rocket falls can position the 70 meter tall rocket in the right direction, which is essential for a very heavy lift. Not only does SpaceX want to reuse the launcher, but it also wants to catch it. This maneuver requires high precision and allows little room for error. To ensure that the booster is precisely positioned when it tries to be caught, SpaceX needs as much control as possible. The grid fins will help provide some of that accuracy on the way down. So, how do you think the video is going? Another obstacle awaits. What intentions do you have for the grid fins? Will they be able to control the descent of a spaceship? How far is Elon Musk ready to go to improve the spaceship's intergalactic travel capabilities? Well, stick around as we answer these questions. 
However, before we continue, please consider subscribing to the channel. It would mean the world to us. Grid fins on super heavy aircraft also help with descent control. They'll not only be able to aid Orient on the way down, but they'll also be able to slow it down. On the way down, Super Heavy will travel extremely fast, but it'll be much lighter than at liftoff because the top stage will be separated and the majority of their propellant will have been expanded. Despite the grid fin design, they will generate drag, which may aid in slowing the booster's descent before a landing burn. The fins will also be unique in the way that they'll not be able to fold, meaning that when launched, they will be fully extended rather than tucked away. This will not be a problem for the ascent due to its incredible strength and mass. The Starship's combined weight and the over 30 Raptor engines will outweigh any drag caused by the fins. One of the reasons the fins are so huge and made of steel is because of this. This is necessary in order to withstand all launch and landing forces. They must work on a number of launches in the future, not just one. Another benefit of grid fins is that they provide a catch point. This could be one of the most surprising advantages of super heavy grid fins. SpaceX aims to catch super heavy in mid-flight, as I've mentioned. SpaceX accomplishes this by constructing two massive metal structures called chopsticks. The launch tower will be coupled to these metal structures, which will be able to move up and down as well as open and close. After Super Heavy has slowed down and is barely between the arms, they'll close in under the grid fins and grasp the booster. The grid fins will also be part of the Super Heavy, which will be captured by the giant metal arms. The massive grid fins are designed to withstand the weight of the booster and allow it to be captured. Because these fins are so large, they'll provide SpaceX more flexibility in the capturing procedure, allowing them to avoid harming the rocket. This is also one of the reasons they're so big and robust. They're made to catch and hold the weight of an old Starship booster. Grid fins, in summary, considerably aid Starship and are quite heavy, but they aren't perfect. The weight is one of the major disadvantages. I'm hopeful Elon Musk and SpaceX can solve this problem fast. Grid fins could be revolutionary in the history of spaceflight if they can figure out how to make them work. The introduction of the Starship's new grid fins has given SpaceX a lot of options. Thanks to Elon Musk's ingenuity, the adjustment in grid fins will be the first step toward an efficient Starship, which will help it on its journey to Mars. Musk's dreams of having a civilization on Mars finally seem to be coming true. That's all there is to it, guys. So what are your thoughts on the Starship's new grid fins as announced by SpaceX? Let us know in the comments section below. Also, remember to subscribe to the channel to receive more content like this in the future.